Next contribution is from Catherine Acosta. I've lost the bio that I wrote for Catherine. Catherine is a filmmaker and sociologist from uh, California. Yeah. She lives in California. <laughs> she should say her own bio. Do you, want to, do you want to introduce yourself, Catherine, and then we'll play the film? Sure. Sorry. Okay. Yes, yeah, so uh, Catherine Acosta and I was um, uh, heavily involved in WDI USA when it was originally starting to form. And uh, uh, I'm a so retired sociologist and an amateur filmmaker. So what we're going to do here is show a clip from uh, a short I made, a video short, that gives an overview of the Council for National Policy and some of its uh, member organizations that some of our um, feminists have been working with or collaborating with in some way uh, in recent years. Uh, so the Council for National Policy, if you never heard of it, was um, formed by Republican operatives around 1980 in the wake of all those social movements of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the civil rights and the anti-war and all that. Did you want to say something more? I thought I would have... No, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just anxious about time. Okay, so I'm going... I, no, I have... I just wanted to say what that was before I queued it up and said that... Um, that uh, anyway, it was to counter the gains of those movements, you know, the women's movement, the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement. And so they formed the Council for National Policy to push back on all that, and they started creating these organizations. So what we're going to see here is uh, starting up with Heritage Foundation, which is one of their foundational organizations. Heritage Foundation, funded by corporate interests and co-founded by Paul Wyrick, is a key organization in the CNP network. Their first mandate for leadership in 1981 offered 2,000 specific ideas for reducing the federal government, increasing military spending, and ending affirmative action programs for women and other minorities. The Reagan administration adopted 60% of them. By the 1980s, the women's movement had become the most dynamic force for social change in the country. So Heritage's first mandate for leadership warned of the increasing political leverage of feminist interests and the infiltration of a feminist network into government agencies. Heritage describes critical race theory as dangerous, subversive, and sinister and identified banning it as one of their top two issues in 2021. Their other top issue in 2021 was tightening voter laws. Co-founder Paul Wyrick famously said in 1980 that he didn't want everyone to vote. Another early and key institution in the CNP network is Concerned Women for America, founded specifically to oppose the women's movement. The stated mission of CWA is to protect and promote biblical values and to impact the culture for Christ, like Heritage, CWA opposes critical race theory, homosexuality, and abortion rights. CWA has consistently opposed the 1979 UN Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW, and continues to meet regularly with Senate staffers to lobby against it. CWA also regularly lobbies against reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, and did so even before gender identity language was inserted into the act. In a 2012 article, Janice Shaw Krauss, a senior fellow at CWA's research arm, called VAWA a boondoggle for feminists and an attack on men. In 1994, at the UN World Conference on Women, Krauss gave a talk on feminism and how it's been an unmitigated disaster for women. Abortion rights, she said, is not about the pursuit of hedonist pleasure. Radical feminists accurately see abortion as the ultimate weapon to escape the control of men. Abortion gives a woman the power to escape giving birth to a child that would connect her to the father for the child's whole life. Alliance Defending Freedom is a key Council for National Policy organization. ADF seeks to dismantle the separation of church and state and has successfully litigated a number of Supreme Court cases toward that goal. In Burwell v. Hobby Lobby, ADF successfully argued that Affordable Care Act mandates requiring businesses to cover birth control in health insurance plans for their employees, violated the religious freedom of the owners of the craft store chain. ADF successfully argued that disallowing the Good News Bible Clubs in after-school programs in public schools violated the free speech of the organization sponsoring the clubs. Catherine Stewart, who has studied Christian nationalism for more than a decade, says that it should be understood as primarily a political movement. Their interpretation of Christianity provides the ideological framework for an authoritarian, patriarchal, white supremacist, capitalist regime. 
In aid of corporate interests, ADF successfully litigated one of the most devastating Supreme Court cases for American democracy, Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. The court ruled that limiting corporate spending on elections violates the free speech of corporations. ADF has expanded beyond the United States, with offices in Geneva, Mexico City, Vienna, Brussels, London, and many other cities around the world. ADF UK is already working to oppose protest buffer zones around abortion clinics in the name of free speech. Independent Women's Forum grew out of the group Women for Judge Thomas, organized by Rosalie Ricky Silberman. Her aim was to support Thomas when law professor Anita Hill accused him of sexual harassment during his Supreme Court nomination hearing. Although Independent Women's Forum is a secular organization, it is another Council for National Policy network group and frequently works with Christian nationalist groups in the CMP network. IWF promotes traditional family values, and their sister organization, Independent Women's Voice, has funded anti-abortion candidates for political office. The organization positions itself as nonpartisan, but Heather Higgins, president of Independent Women's Voice, board chair of Independent Women's Forum, and Gold Circle member of the Council for National Policy, tells potential donors that this pretense is advantageous for drawing women into the conservative orbit. Being branded as neutral, she says, but actually conservative, puts us in a unique position. Our value is that we can take a conservative message and package it in a way that will be acceptable to women who would otherwise not listen to a right-wing organization. IWF specializes in using feminist arguments to advocate right-wing positions. For example, IWF has argued that gun control is sexist, that paid family leave harms women, and that regulating e-cigarettes would discriminate against women. Independent Women's Forum has regularly defended men's rights. They have opposed the Violence Against Women Act, in part because it perpetuates the idea that society is hostile to women. Historically, IWF has opposed Title IX, arguing that it forces schools to artificially manufacture interest in sport among women and harms men by taking resources for sport away from them. Now that the issue of trans-identified males in women's sport has emerged, IWF has joined with other Council for National Policy organizations and with Save Women's Sport, WOLF, and WDI USA in a Title IX coalition to oppose this development. These are just four of the many organizations networked with the Council for National Policy, but they are the key groups with whom some U.S. radical feminists have partnered and coordinated. Their principal arguments for working with anti-feminist, Christian nationalist organizations is that the gender identity issue constitutes an emergency, and that we can set aside issues with which we disagree and focus on this single issue. But do we agree on the gender identity issue? What feminists mean by gender is a set of sex role stereotypes norms, characteristics, expected behaviors, assigned on the basis of sex, and that reinforce male supremacy. For Christian nationalists, these sex role stereotypes are innate. To defy them is unnatural. Many of them blame feminists for creating the gender identity problem through feminist critique of gender and refusing gender conformity. For the radical right, the term gender ideology encompasses feminism, lesbian and gay rights, and transgenderism and they intend to roll back the gains of all three. The difference between feminist and Christian nationalist views of gender affects outcomes of jointly produced law and policy. Consider the Women's Bill of Rights, authored by Women's Liberation Front and Women's Independent Voice, introduced in Congress last May. The bill affirms that in federal law, the terms woman, girl, and mother refer to human females. Unlike the Equal Rights Amendment, it's not written to affirm women's equal standing with men in the Constitution. It merely affirms biological difference. And rather than raising the standard of judicial scrutiny for sex-based discrimination to the same level as for race-based and religious-based discrimination, the Women's Bill of Rights specifically calls for the lower standard, intermediate scrutiny, to be applied. So while the bill, if enacted, would ensure sex-segregated locker rooms in sport, it offers little protection from sex-based discrimination. The bill's far-right sponsors speak of protecting women and their unique role in reproduction, recalling past justifications for discrimination against women. The bill reflects primarily the interests of the more powerful anti-feminist organization with whom Wolf has partnered. 